find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sings. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the blood. Guys, welcome back to the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. A little video producer here in the Pittsburgh, PA area, working with the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and a few other eh, projects around here, wrestling and otherwise. Uh, with me is my compatriot, Eamon Payton. At Eamon to please. He's the uh, ringside announcer for NWA Inspire Pro down there in uh, uh, San Antonio, Texas currently. Uh, well, that, I, I, you I, are I, I, in San Antonio, Texas, and you're an announcer for Inspire Pro wherever the heck they hail from. Austin, Texas. <laughs> Texas is a big state. It, it, yeah, it's, you know, uh, it's it's it, yeah. Anyways, we, and we'll just consider Texas its own entity. So anything that we, we do is from. I from understand they the do too. Texas. So you know, um, but anyways, uh, this is a show we talk about indie wrestling because we dig it and we're dig it enough that we do something involved in it. Obviously, between the two of us, uh, in our in our corners of the world. Uh, and we like to bring somebody on every week to talk about indie wrestling, etc., uh, etc. Et you can find this and other stuff uh, that we do in a, in a pro wrestling sense over at Ro- prowrestlingmayhemshow.com, uh, including uh, 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 this show, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show proper, where we just talk about wrestling in general. Had a great uh, guest tonight with Dan Hinkles from Serious Parody doing some great video games on uh, mobile and PlayStation 3 actually coming up here. Uh, awesome time with him tonight from Scotland. Um, and uh, you can subscribe to this on all kinds of fashions, including YouTube, uh, iTunes, all kinds of stuff. Please rate us on iTunes specifically. That, that really helps get the word out there for the show, no matter what platform you're, you're finding us on. Uh, you can also drop us a line and let us know your thoughts on people we've interviewed, the stuff we've said on the show, or indies you think we should be checking out at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And you can also join us here live uh, we're starting about 11 to 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com every Tuesday. Um, so with that, uh, we, the guest is uh, from your neck of the woods, uh, Eamon. Uh, so who are we talking to this week? Indeed, it, it was my week to, uh, to bring on a guest. And, and this was a guy that I actually have wanted to have on for a good while uh, from the fact that he is definitely uh, making some big waves across Texas and, and, and you know various other parts br- branching out a bit. Uh, he's always he's always one to entertain. He's always one to to put on a good match, and it's a pleasure uh, to finally have him here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, the one and only Steve Arino. Steve, how are you doing this evening? I'm pretty good. Thanks for having me, Eamon. It's uh, it's good to know I'm entertaining, and uh, hopefully, I can uh, keep y'all entertained today. Uh, Absolutely. Man, I'm, but you know, if I could if I could plug stuff like you did in the beginning, man, I I, I think I've I think I'd have a job in WWE, you know. Like, man, <laughs> you've got the you've got the gift of of like, you know, I guess it's called gift of gap, the gift of plugging, you know. Man, yeah, I don't know if it's a gift. Good I mean, work it, there. It, it, that's a uh, that that's uh, doing podcasting for nine years. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> done that. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's. I think all wrestlers need to do some podcasting, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. I mean, we've been seeing it, you know, definitely more nowadays, which is which is really cool. But it, like I said, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, I guess the first question I we normally ask because it's a big uh, icebreaker of sorts, uh, since you know we all got into wrestling uh, for one reason or another. Um, uh, what is your first ever memory of professional wrestling? Well, I uh, discovered wrestling. Well, my love for wrestling, you know, through other through other things. You know, as a kid. I knew I wanted to, you know, be famous, I guess. I mean, at first I wanted to be a pro basketball player. So mm-hmm. I, you know, pursued that. And then I, you know, changed my mind and realized I wanted to be a rock star. So I, you know, decided I wanted to do that. And then I wanted to be an actor, you know. And uh, once I discovered wrestling, it kind of, I realized it's all of those things into one, you know, professional athlete, showman, uh, just being in front of the big lights, you know, I just, I always wanted to do that. And uh, I discovered wrestling and I just, you know, fell in love with it. I think the, I was pretty shielded as a kid. So I had to uh, watch wrestling, you know, in commercial breaks or when my parents were, you know, leaving the room and all that. So I slowly got, you know, into wrestling because I couldn't watch it very much. And uh, also 
as part of my, you know, being shielded, we didn't have cable or anything. So Mm -hmm. I only got to watch like SmackDown on Fridays. And that was, that was my only wrestling for the week, you know, but it was just something I fell in love with. So I, you know, pursued it and eventually found a place to train up in Austin. And that's where I, you know, met a lot of the guys, you know, here in Texas and stuff. We all, I trained with a lot of the, you know, familiar faces here around Texas, but Definitely. yeah, I'm just, uh, just, um, I think the first glimpse of wrestling I ever saw was flipping through the channels and I saw, uh, I'll never forget it. Triple H attacked Kurt Angle with a, with a sledgehammer. <laughs> uh, that goes to show you just how like far, you know, just how late I was in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, it just blew my mind. The fact that this guy was attacking another guy with a, with a sledgehammer and he wasn't dead, you know, <laughs> um, it just, it just blew my mind and I just became obsessed with it and that just carried off from there. Definitely. that kind of, that sort of one unique thing of pro wrestling that just larger than life sort of, sort of stuff is, yeah, I, we definitely can can see that. Um, so to talk about your your training, you you said you started uh, in Austin. Uh, uh, where what school did you actually start at, and what was it like, sort of training to become a pro wrestler? Well, the school I trained in it wasn't uh, super advertised. You know, I had to you know scour the internet looking for a place to train, and eventually mm-hmm. I found one. And um, yeah, it was. Uh, Actually, I got in contact with George De La Isla, who, um, I mean, if you go to an Inspire show, if you go to, like, pretty much any Texas indie wrestling show, you're probably going to see one of his students there. Mm -hmm. And more than likely, they're going to be, you know, one of the top performers. I mean, I don't mean to, you know, to my own horn or his horn, (laughs) but it's just, it's proven. It's proven when you go to a show, you're going to see, you know, George's students excel further than everybody else. I mean, it's just... Um, but it, uh, it was, it was something else, you know? I mean, my first day of training actually was moving from one gym to the other. And then, uh, I got to learn how to take a ring, put a ring up and down. You know, that's like a major part of training and breaking into the business. And then, uh, yeah, I had a lot of guys, um, George, the head trainer, he was kind of, uh, going blind as I was coming in. So he was more of the, you know, out of the ring instructor. And I had guys like, um, Mr. B and Jojo Bravo Mm. helping me inside the ring, like learn the basics and, you know, get my, uh, get the moves down while George was, you know, the outside of the ring sensei. Definitely. And, and not, not to jump too far in the timeline, but like even some of the, the upcoming names in, in Texas that, that like you meant that, that came up through George. Uh, I, I know a lot of them kind of cite you as, as, as being one of the guys that really has helped them along. Uh, how has it been like sort of transitioning to being like that, that person that was starting out and learning this to being somebody that's, that's helping others, you know, progress in pro wrestling. It, uh, it's another step in my training, you know, training others. Um, yeah, the guys that helped me, you know, moved on. And a lot of those guys either moved out of town, out of state. And, uh, I'm just one of the few that's kind of still here in town, which makes me feel bad at times, but also it's, it's always good to, you know, have a steady place to go and practice new stuff and, uh, you know, shake off the ring rust on a weekly basis, you know, uh, that's one of the major reasons why I've kind of stayed in Austin because I just have access to a ring, you know, mm-hmm. 10 minutes from my apartment, you know, so <laughs> it's, it's really great. But, um, yeah, I, being one of the guys that's, you know, left behind, I, uh, helped George with the new batch of students and some of the guys you actually see, you know, currently have, uh, you know, I've helped out and, um, you know, training students, you, you pick up things that you might have forgotten or didn't pick up when you, you know, were first learning them. Mm-hmm. And watching, you know, 12 people take, you know, 100 back bumps, you, you know, you pick up little things that they do that you might be able to do better. And, uh, 
I always hear from like the pros and everything, you know, your good wrestler never stops learning. So I'm even learning stuff as I'm, you know, teaching the basics and stuff like that. Like if we're going over arm drags or body slams and we do, you know, a hundred a night, right. I'm going to pick something up. I'm going to pick something up that I, you know, didn't, uh, if I hadn't gone, you know, it's, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if I'm being very clear on it, but it's, uh, you know, no, definitely. you do something, you can only, you only master something when you do it, you know, a thousand times. And, and, and it's the small things, that, at least from what I, I'm, I'm getting from you, it's kind of, it's, there's, there's small things that, that can always be learned and always be, you know, taught, can always be taught as well. Right. And, uh, you know, what I, what I hear from, you know, people that go and, and try out at WWE is, you know, they can teach you all the, you know, fancy moves. They just want your basics. And, uh, the basics are what's important. You know, if your basics aren't there, then you might as well forget about all the, the fancy moves that come after it, you know? Right. Definitely. Um, uh, to now to sort of go into your career and, and, and we definitely want to talk about, uh, uh, I guess the best way to put it is the many faces of, of Steve Arena. Uh, I remember the first yeah. time I, the, the first time I ever got to see you wrestle live was, uh, back when you were going, uh, by the name of Steve McEnroe. Uh, and, yep. and and we're donning a, a, a headband and, and, and some pretty uh, small shorts uh, and a tennis, yep. a tennis racket. Um, what is what is that like? Sort of you you definitely uh, got a reputation, I guess, and, and a good reputation as as very much a character based kind of guy. Uh, uh, what's that been like? What was what was first of all? What was your time like in, in that character of, uh, of Steve McEnroe? It's funny you mention that because I was just going through some like old, I have a folder of old McEnroe pictures and I have one of me, you and Honky Kong at like an autograph signing. I do remember that picture actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it, I don't, I don't know. Your, uh, your face is, is quite, you know, you, you don't know what to think standing <laughs> in between a tennis player and a, and a white gorilla, you know, no. <laughs> Not but, at all. uh, but that's, you know, that, that, that's normal at RCW, you know, um, <laughs> Yeah, your que- oh, I'm sorry. What was your question about uh, Steve McEnroe? Just sort of what was it like, sort of portraying that gimmick that, especially that kind of gimmick that's very unique and 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 something that hasn't really been done. Yeah, um, it taught me to just be ready for anything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I do eventually, I mean, I want to, you know, see what my what my chances are. At, WWE and TV and stuff like that. And one of my strongest, you know, uh, strengths, I think, is the ability to work with anything and to just run with any sort of gimmick. I mean, after being a tennis playing wrestler, I feel like I can do anything and (laughs) make it work, you know. Uh, But yeah, I I actually showed up to a clinic run by Funaki when they were still in a partnership. And I made the mistake of wearing a red, white, and blue uh, sweatband (laughs) over my long hair. And they saw me get in the ring and do a bunch of basic drills. And they pulled me aside and told me that they wanted me to be a tennis player. (laughs) And I told them, oh, you know, well, that's cool. I mean, uh, I can do that. But, you know, I, I have this character that I do, you know, and I'm... I'm pretty comfortable with that. And they said, no, no, you're going to be a tennis player. (laughs) And I was like, great. So uh, I had to get an outfit together that day for a show that they were doing later. And, you know, if you look at like my McEnroe Facebook page that I still have up and I still have pictures on my, you know, Steve-O page or whatever. But the worst outfit I had was that first one where I couldn't find anything but some khaki shorts and like a long sleeve thermal shirt and like it's just the worst Steve McEnroe's ever looked <laughs> and you know I tried to uh, you know have fun with it I made a different colored outfit every time you know mm-hmm. I'd go to <coughs> excuse me like Academy or Sports Authority and just find a whole new you know colored outfit and that you know kept it different and entertaining and I slowly started to come up with different tennis ideas to do in the match, you know. I went from a guy that, you know, didn't know the first thing about tennis to, you know, I came up with all these different puns and I, you know, I I dare say I ran with it and made it one of the most entertaining things on that show, you know. And mm-hmm. 
a lot of there was a lot of um frustration you know i mean uh it made me i've never been like the most confident guy and you know the fact that i i came to him several times and i you know Sometimes I was feeling it, sometimes I wasn't feeling it, but the fact that I wasn't allowed to do something different made me think, you know, maybe I'm nothing more than just a gimmick, you know. And that's really why I'm glad that at Inspire I've been given the chance to be just Steve, you know. And Mm -hmm. Us wrestlers, we always want the coolest nicknames, you know, but just Steve is, is, is perfect for me, you know. I mean, considering what what I've been through and everything I've done, you know? Definitely. And, and you know, going back to, like, even the gimmick stuff, uh, uh, the, I guess the next sort of big thing that you got the opportunity to do was when uh, you started working for ACW, and you basically you were a, a new gimmick every show, and, and uh, you know, the creativity started to really come out. I think you grew a big following because of that. Um, and, and even that, you know, lending to the fact that now you're finally getting to sort of be you and just be... You know, Steve Arino, the wrestler, the, you know, the, the, the guy that you are. Uh, uh, what has that kind of been like, you know, that transition and, and, and your time uh, with your various, you know, different gimmicks? Yeah, I mean, uh, once I went to ACW, I considered, you know, my character, my gimmick to just be real, you know. I mean, <laughs> I tried to tell people, you know, my character, the, the guy you see at ACW while I was changing gimmicks, was really me, you know, you weren't going to find a more realer gimmick in wrestling than that, because after that time at Steve McEnroe, I really was trying to, like, find myself and, you know, gain that confidence again that I could be something outside of a gimmick, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, just Steve has, you know, kind of uh, grown on me because I just didn't want to be like anybody else, you know. I had the long hair down to my shoulders, you know, I have this, you know, the same build as 99% of the guys out there. And I just mm-hmm. refused to be the same, you know, Great. and that's kind of where I got the ideas for the different gimmicks. And a lot of the moves you see me do, you know, I've just thought up on my own, you know, even the silly way I get into the ring now, it's, I do <laughs> it because I, it's all part of just me refusing to be the same. And, uh, yeah, but I think I'm getting off track, but you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, a good, you know, transition. I got to just get all my gimmicks out there and show everybody that I really can make anything work. Um, I don't know if you were there, but I, I did a gimmick where I was passed out the whole time. I did a, I did a week, that's the last gimmick I did before I, (laughs) became Jeff Steve was my uh, weekend at Jameson. And uh, I had just come back from being depressed that I lost to Chris True. So I was, quote, you know, binge partying at at Jack Jameson's house. (laughs) And Scotty and Jack had to carry me out to the ring. And Scotty Santiago basically threw me into all these moves. I mean, uh, I think it's up on Smart Mark if you want to check it out. But it's just, it's one of my favorite matches. And I hardly did anything, you know. And, and that's and the thing, right? like, like going back to your sort of point about how the ability to work with anything, to work with the idea that you have to play a wrestler who's completely passed out drunk, like, like, like how someone is able to execute that. I mean, I, I'm sure anybody would find that difficult, and then to be able to pull that off has to has to be a really a, a amazing feat. Yeah, I mean, for not doing anything, I'm very proud of that match, you know. (laughs) And it was kind of like the final, you know, it was me kind of planting the flag and saying, you know, look look what I can do. And then uh, after that, I, you know, ditched the gimmicks and I became, you know, I started Mm -hmm. taking myself a little more seriously. And coincidentally, that's when I started, you know, winning titles and, in a lot of the places around Texas, you know, in ACW yeah. and Inspire. So, you know, the second I started, you know, taking Steve Reno seriously was, you know, the second he got, you know, he got taken seriously, I guess. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, now to sort of talk about, uh, I guess, sort of uh, in the timeline, uh, you start with Inspire Pro Wrestling. 
Uh, and again, with your ability to really work with anything came from uh, your tag team of sorts, if you can call it that, with the Hollywood Knives. Yeah. Uh, uh, where you basically had to work handicap matches uh, for the majority of the time because your partner, uh, Bradley Axel Dawson, tended to get knocked out or, or, or just unable to compete, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, um, yeah, if you can call him a partner, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, yeah, I showed up to Inspire, and they, uh, it was kind of a arranged situation, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it almost turned into the same kind of Steve McEnroe situation, you know. They didn't have any spots for just Steve, but they, you know, they were looking for a partner for, for this guy, and, you know, me being the... The hungry wrestler I was, I just, you know, jumped on the opportunity. And, you know, so that's the the, the story of the Hollywood Knives began. And, uh, yeah, you know, I just didn't think much about it during the, you know, during the match. And just after match after match after match, I just uh, ended up doing up all doing all the work. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, <clears throat> sorry. I just, um, yeah, it was just one show after the other. He kept getting knocked out, or somebody would conveniently take him out uh, while my back was turned, you know. But uh, one way or the other, I kept winning and winning. And then finally, I think, uh, when I wrestled the Orphans, actually, and coincidentally, two guys that uh, I helped train a little bit when mm -hmm. I was helping out George, uh, Zach and D.G. Taylor, they... Uh, got the better of me that night and uh Bradley therefore turned on me and you know the whole story you can watch the whole story from the beginning at uh at Inspire. That's what that's what I love about it is that mm -hmm. the first show they actually put up on Smart Mark was the uh was your debut. Was the the debut of the Hollywood Knives, yeah. So you can watch the whole story. I'm not doing it justice, but uh you know, basically, I kept overcoming the odds, overcoming the odds, and then finally, when I just couldn't overcome him anymore, he turned on me because I was apparently being selfish. <laughs> I think you were there doing commentary on it. You saw the whole thing. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I didn't know really what to take of that. Those kind of comments, because I, I mean, I think it was. I think from the fans too, it was. It was clear to see. I think the idea of seeing somebody wrestle all these handicap matches and have no, you know, nobody having his back and, and, you know, get, and that kind of gave them, I think something to get behind. I, and you could tell, you can tell show after show, I think you were gaining a bit more of a following because of that. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, with each of those matches, I, I guess I got more and more confident, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, by the time Bradley had turned on me, I was, you know, I was ready to break out on my own. And uh, at Fun 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 Fest, we had a loser leaves Inspire match, and of course I beat him. And <laughs> Fun 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 Fest itself was like a whole great weekend for me, you know. And just the whole just Steve, I'm gonna call it a movement here, but it's it's <laughs> it's way less than that at this point, you know. But the whole just Steve movement, it kind of took off fairly quickly, you know. The second I started taking myself seriously was the second, you know, uh, the Hollywood Knives took off. I uh, got to wrestle Dasher Hadfield mm -hmm. um, and Tadasuke, which was awesome. Uh, the whole Fun 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 Fest weekend was amazing. I won the Congressional Medal of Honor. Um, got to wrestle guys like Davey Vega and Jojo Bravo. I mean, I wrestled Jojo before, but, you know, not recently. So mm -hmm. we're finally, you know able to show the fans what, you know, two guys from Georgia school can really do, you know, so I can't wait to get in there with him more, but I'm just trying to, you know, touch on all the different, different bases here. And um, also, um, uh, last inspired for a wrestling event, I think probably the biggest thing you capturing the, uh, the J crown championship. That's right. Yeah. Oh man. What a match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, going from the very yeah. beginning of that gauntlet, I mean, you know, you, you definitely went through through all of them, and I, I think in, in many senses, you know, earned it. You know, I think uh, I'll be very weirded out if I show up to a Inspire Pro show and I'm not, you know, stressed out of my mind. 
<laughs> uh, you know, I mean, not only am I usually the odds are stacked against me, but I'm usually the first, if not second match. And, you know, it's, uh, it can be a lot, can be a lot of pressure sometimes, Definitely. but you know, if, like I said, if I'm not under pressure, something's wrong, you know, um, I guess I work best under pressure. Definitely. So, uh, uh Kind of speaking of that as well, because um, I mean, you, you are the current Inspire Pro J Crown champion. I know uh, in a little less than two weeks, uh, the next Inspire Pro event, you got a big match as well uh, against Mr. Touchdown from Chikara. Uh, obviously, back in Battle Wars, you faced off against uh, Dasher Hatfield, and I know you you definitely I know you know that match meant a lot to you from you know your following of Chikara and 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 you know hopefully I would like I would think you know wanting to maybe do something with them down the line. Uh, and getting to show what you could do against against one of their guys. Uh, uh, is Definitely. That, is, is that your same sort of mindset going in, going into this match? Well, actually, I was uh, watching some of the uh, the throwbacks before you called me. I was killing time <laughs> watching some watching some footage, um, and uh, actually, a lot of the a lot of what I watched to prepare for Dasher. You know, I got to see a lot of Mr. Touchdown in there. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it kind of works out, you know. I mean, I didn't, in my wildest imagination, think that we'd be wrestling down the line while I was watching those matches. But you know, it's uh, I definitely have some sort of advantage with that. Um, from what I've seen, you know, Dasher is more of the plays more of the power game, and Mister Touchdown tends to use more speed. I guess he's more acrobatic. He's more agile. Um, still a strong guy, but I notice he's, you know, I'm going to have to use my speed to match his. And uh, considering, you know, he's a former Young Lions Cup champion, he's the current, they are still the the, the uh, Chikara Tag Champions, correct? I do believe they actually just lost it uh, to <coughs> Devastation Corporation at the last uh, I picked the deal. Uh, but but the, oh, mo- the most the most recent before that, absolutely. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, definitely watching footage, getting ready for that. I know he's not someone to take lightly. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, definitely. Um, I always, you know, I never want to take a show off. I want to keep defending the, the crown. I want to, you know, prove that I deserve it. And, uh this is going to be a hell of a way to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Um, so, so to want to talk about, since, you know, we're kind of early in the year, um, a lot of people sort of set their goals and, and, and what they want, you know, down the line in 2015. Uh, is there any in mind for you, maybe, you know, wrestlers you want to face or, or places you want to go? Um, is there any sort of, uh, I guess, goals uh, going into the new year? My only goal is just to, to get out. You know, mm-hmm. and not that I don't love Texas. It's just uh, I realize that I, I just need to get my name more out there. You know, mm-hmm. um, when these guys come to Texas, I want them to know who I am. You know, I want to be, you know, just a name that people know. And right now I'm just a name that people know in Texas, you know, and mm-hmm. it's uh, that's my main goal right now is just to uh What, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Commercialize? What what is it? Advertise? Just yeah, advertise yeah. myself more. Just just get myself more out there, basically. Mm-hmm. And, I, um, and I know you've been you've been doing some some traveling as a late. I know you went. Uh, I want to say maybe a year ago went out to uh, Arizona. Uh, I think for Slam U. Uh, you've done uh, Illinois, if I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, just recently I went to Illinois and. Um, that was a uh, that was pretty fun, you know. Just like the rush of being out on the road, you know, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's what fuels wrestlers, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but uh, that was just you know last month, and you know I want to keep taking more steps forward from here, you know. Definitely, absolutely. Um, so to t- kind of round this out, uh, the big question that we ask all of our guests uh, on the Indie Mayhem show, and. Uh, it's a question that people tend to take a lot of different ways, uh, and, and feel free to take it any way uh, uh, you wish to. 
Uh, but sure. the question, I, uh, but the question I have for you is, uh, in your opinion, what is the best thing about independent wrestling, and what is the worst thing about independent wrestling? Hmm. I'd have to say probably. I mean, just right off the top of my head, the best thing about you said independent wrestling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Independent wrestling in general. Well, just the the variety. I mean, the amounts out there. You know, um, I keep hearing about a new promotion, you know, every day, which, you know, is kind of necessary for like wrestler homework, doing research on different places to go and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I hear about, you know, new things happening, new promotions popping up. And it's, it's, that's my, that's what I think is the best part is that there's no, uh, there's just so many outlets, you know, you've got like Hood Slam, which is just its own crazy thing. You've got Inspire, which is, you know, provides something new, you know, like the way that the way that the shows are put together is something new that I don't see anywhere else, you know, right. um, ACW provides its own like brand of wrestling, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's women's promotions, there's inner species promotions, you know, <laughs> like there's so much there's zombie promotions, you know, like there's so much crazy stuff out there. And, uh, I guess it kind of leads to, you know, what needs to change, which I guess is just an avenue for everyone to watch this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, just to let more people be aware. Cause I feel like if, you know, with the amount of wrestling out there, with the amount of indie wrestling out there, uh, there's something for everybody, you know, I did a, uh, one of my, uh, speech classes in, in college, I did a, we we're supposed to make a convincing argument and change people's minds about something. And I did mine on pro wrestling because it was just like what I was most passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I did this 20 minute speech on how there was, you know, wrestling or a wrestler for everyone, you know? And, uh, it's just, it's an art form, and I feel if more people really sat down and understood it for what it is and not just, you know, the barbaric stuff that they flip the channels and just skim through and see, you know. Right. Uh, I think more people, I think, you know, almost everyone would be into wrestling, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, if you're into the hardcore stuff, there's that. If you're into, you know, technical wrestling there's that if you're into if you're into big sh you know if you're into like the circus and the trapeze artists you know there's there's you know acrobatics there's stories to tell there's if you look hard enough there's even zombies you know and stuff like that <laughs> so i mean wrestling can appeal to everyone and i think the biggest thing is just letting more people know about it and right. having um people having more of an open mind about it Definitely, absolutely. Uh, well, well, thank you very much, Steve, for uh, for coming on the show. Um, for for fans that are listening, uh, if they want to uh, check you out uh, either on social media or at an upcoming event, uh, uh, feel free to plug away uh, uh, any place they can find you. Yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter as Steve Only One, and I made it a weird Cajun spelling. It's <laughs> S T E V E A U X. N L Y one, and uh, I think y'all have a graphic or something. So, and then maybe for I someone, even just misspelled it, but uh, yeah, and, I'm and on Twitter, I'm on very, Instagram. For someone very new to Twitter, because I know you just started not too long ago, you, I, I feel like you're one of my favorite wrestlers on Twitter because we, we've talked before on the show. It's sort of about like social media and wrestling and stuff like that, and and I feel like you're one of the ones that kind of gets it and, and understands, you know, what it's all about. I feel, I mean, I'm glad you think so. I'm still trying to get it. Like, I still, I still honestly don't know how to use my Twitter. Like, I'm still <laughs> figuring it out. I mean, I just, yeah, I just made it a couple months ago, actually. I think I created it at Fun 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 Fest. I think I made it, like, my first tweet was me and Twitter had a baby at Fun 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 Fest or something like that. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out and everything. And I'm on Instagram and Facebook. So if you all, you know. Anyone, feel free to hit me up, send me a message, say hi, something like that. 
Definitely, definitely. And, and if you're at an event uh, in Texas or, or elsewhere in Steve Arena is on the card, I encourage you to go check it out because, uh, like I said before, uh, you, you will definitely be entertained. Uh, so once again, thank you, Steve, for uh, coming on. And uh, I think it's time for me and Sorg to talk about some of the stuff happening in the world of independent wrestling. That's right, Eamon. Um, not a lot of uh, discussion talks. Not, it's been a, kind of a quiet week in indie wrestling. Uh, nobody's done anything stupid lately. Um, that's good. <laughs> doesn't that seem like that's the, well, well you know. Uh, but no, but, <laughs> but there's some cool stuff going on. Uh, first of all, big shouts to the friend of the show, Dalton Castle. Who's on yep. the sh- uh, we have, wait, have we had him on the show? I think we have. Show? I believe so. Uh, I know we talked to him. It must be. I know we've talked to him. I believe. I can't it was remember any Mayhem not... show or Wrestling Mayhem show. Oh, either way, either way, he's a friend of the show. Um, and he, I guess, is it his debut that happened on Ring of Honor? I saw a picture. I didn't get a chance uh, to watch it. It was. I, well, yeah, it was his debut. It was a okay. part of the uh, Top Prospect tournament. Right. And uh, which they, is cool to see because I, 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 he was one of the names that really stuck out. Is like that's a guy that nice, you know, should nice. be in there. He's still talented. It, it's so great that we've had him with the IWC for for. He's been the champion for uh, I think it was thirteen months until losing it to RJ uh, at this last RJ City at this last show, um, which is now in the possession of Tommy Dreamer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so funny how that works. Um, indie wrestling. Indie wrestling, but no, good to see him on there. Also, I, I didn't, so they have a show coming up here. Uh, AI AI Wrestling dot com uh, or is it AIW Wrestling? Oh, I don't. Know. Uh, I think it's AI Wrestling. Yeah, I think it's AI Wrestling dot com. Um, I, I saw this uh, pop up on my Twitter uh, during Wrestling Mayhem show earlier. Uh, guys on TV, I get a kick out of this. Their next show is actually the twentieth uh, of February. I choo choo choose you. Those guys up there are having so much fun. They have, they, they really do have fun with the names. Also, um, Dennis Stamp is booked on that show. But so. like, there's they have a group called Guys on TV, which includes Matt Cross. Zima Ion, uh, DJ Zima Ion of TNA, uh, EC3 of TNA, and mm-hmm. now Ray Rowe of Ring of Honor. Which is basically a collaboration of the guys in Cleveland that made it on mainstream TV. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Hey, we're better than all of you. Yeah, it, Which, and that's I, like, I really enjoy it. And that's the thing. like They're going out saying, hey, we're better than you because we're on TV, right? And and Ray Rowe, I think this was his first appearance in AIW in like seven years. Right, he was a big mainstay in there for a long time. Well, so was EC3 as a uh, uh, Derek Bateman before uh, coming to NXT. Yeah, I watched. Um, I guess at their Absolution big event, uh, they had Ray come out and return uh, while he was still recovering from his motorcycle accident, um, and and uh, is getting into kind of a heated feud with a. Uh, with uh, Josh Prohibition, mm-hmm. uh, a very personal feud. So uh, uh, it, it seems very interesting. I, th- I think Josh is actually on the verge of retirement, uh, and it's possible that if they have a singles match down the line, that could be his uh, last match. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, uh, that could be really interesting stuff. There's there's cool stuff happening in AIW. I know they just moved venues because uh, they got kicked out of their old one because oh. uh, they were closing. Um, uh, and, and it seems like they're sort of on an upswing, and... and uh, it's cool to see, and, and it's cool that you know Cleveland has like a cool you know sort of wrestling federation like that. Um, other stuff happening. Uh, I, I wanted to put over a couple of groups that put over. Look at me looking using the terminology. Damn it! I just I just had there. Oh, there it is. Uh, VOW. We talked about several times on the show before. Vicious Outcast Wrestling happened down mm-hmm. in Connellsville, PA, usually about an hour uh, uh, south of Pittsburgh. Um, they have a show coming up, February Freeze. A lot of friends of the show are going to be on this, including Jimmy Nuts, including uh, 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 Flex Palace, uh, Andrew Palace and, and uh, Chess Flexor, um, as well as uh, Gory and uh, Aiden Vale as e uh his persona down there for that. Um, a great promotion. They're doing some great stuff there. Um, um, and, and a lot of names come through uh, the last few months. They had a big run where they just had somebody from a promotion like every show. Uh, Davy Richards was just on there. Tomosa Champa, uh, back in mm-hmm. October. I mean, it was it, it, they're doing really really cool stuff and, and getting their name out there. And it's cool to see what they're doing. Um, and they, they're running uh, a live TV, not live TV, but they're taping for TV uh, as well. The local PC TV Twenty One. Um, and those are also available. A uh, hot tip there: you can also go on their YouTube channel uh, for VOW if I find something that's actually lit properly uh and you can go check out what they've been putting out uh uh there uh and experience that uh they have a cool the- little little um feel to their shows from the stuff that i've seen from them they got a there's I, I, from the stuff i see a lot in that kind of 
I know it's not directly like Pittsburgh, but like that kind of area. Like I think they've got a, they're doing things a little bit differently than some other people. Mm-hmm. Not 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 good or bad, but just it's different. And they I, got I a cool vibe. Great. They I mean they they have a, and and I've seen that. I mean, I would say about midsummer. I think they figured out what their feel is. They figured out how to do their video and everything. Like it was definitely, a, right. I mean, uh, you know, it's growing pains for everybody. And we'll get to another one that's going through that in a moment. Uh, but I think are are, are are getting to the point where you can start talking about. But I mean, look at like I remember talking with uh, the guys involved when it, and as they were playing together, and you see they got the entrance. I mean, there's a presentation uh, at IWC. You know, we we talked about with the court time shows and that presentation, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that there's there's the lights going, and there's a set. You know, I mean that that set that they have there at VOW reminds me of the set that they have. Um, whenever I used to go to the ECW arena for like Ring of Honor and Chikara shows, we went to King of Trios. Like there was a yeah. general set that was kind of built in. The one that was like on the corner, like next right. to a pole. Right. Like like, and, and this is this is something they're traveling with, and they've kind of and adapted it, and wherever from, they are. From what it looks, I mean, it looks like a fairly like smaller venue, like a like a, a traditional like independent wrestling kind of venue. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it, just the little things really just increases the production and increases the look of things to where you know it doesn't have to you know look a certain way that you you know you're forced for it to look you know what doing, I mean and they're not doing a whole lot like like the hard cam is locked down and they, you know I, I usually have a problem with that if they can't follow along and everything but um but no they're doing good it looks like they got a good shooter out there and everything so that, that's really cool to see. Um, you know, that coming together for them. Again, really, really cool look at feel. Uh, check them out, ViciousHowcastWrestling.com. Check them out on Facebook, YouTube, and, and see what they're doing um, if you're not in the area. Because even if you're in Pittsburgh, it's an hour out. You know, that's, you know, uh, hard to get out to. Another guy, um, I was actually talking to the videographer for these guys, um, mm-hmm. and uh, there was this story we talked about a couple weeks ago about the ring that went missing, and the IWC uh, kind of helped out <laughs> there. Um, but this is um, a... I think I joked uh, offhand talk about somebody earlier that this feels like IWC's trainer fed uh, because a lot of their trainees um, uh, do uh, work for this group. Uh, but uh-huh. there's one, and then there's uh, people's opinions about this group uh, that I hear, and I don't know anything about it. I just know what I'm seeing. Um, but it, it's it's uh, five star wrestling. Um, they're north of the city about an hour. I just looked it up because I didn't know where East, East Brady, PA was at all. Um, but again, another group, and again, not in the city and in, in, in a neighborhood that, or neighborhood, a, in a, in a region that does not have any wrestling. You know, I feel like we have way too much wrestling, especially south of Pittsburgh, right? Uh, mm-hmm. There's three promotions within like a 10 mile radius and it's just ridiculous. Um, and I think it's super, super saturated, but, uh, this is a group, you know, looks like they're doing very well. It's been standing room only. And there was actually a second show north of the city. Uh, I don't even know who put it on called, it was like a wrestle rumble. They did along with the Royal rumble. Uh, they had Sabu and, and Facade, like we talked about uh, last week with him. Um, and both shows just did incredible uh, numbers from the sounds of it, like filled the venue at least, right? Uh, but again, another place that features, you know, Andrew Palace in this clip that I'm showing here against Darren De Niro, who's a guy that just popped up in IWC in a pretty major pieces of change angle. Uh, you know, guy that checks flex swords there, Corey Futuristic getting some play, you know. Um, you know, these guys are getting around, and it's, it's good to see that there's another place for them to kind of play an experiment with that. You know, Serafini, and our friend of the show, is a part of this uh, group as well. Marshall Gambini, uh, G- Gambini. <laughs> Gambino, uh, an old friend of the show. I was actually had a really good conversation uh, with him uh, at the last IWC show about what's going on up there. Uh, and he's just uh, debuted as, I believe, a commissioner uh, type figure from what I'm seeing. Um, so, and, and again, uh, they, they got video. Like I said, it's mostly, uh, you know, one ringside camera. So, you know, that can be a little janky if you don't, you can't, you know, screw up one camera. It, it, it's there. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it looks fan, look, looks great. Um, uh, you know, you can check that out online now. again, like, uh, the black diamond wrestling has been releasing a lot of stuff uh, I've been talking about. And again, another one kind of in a greater Pittsburgh region. Um, a lot of these guys, and, and, and it's interesting to see these guys, you know, my model with the people I work with is very much, you know, DVDs, digital, digitals, right? Like we, they feel like they have a product that we can put out and, and, and sell and, and, and it does, um, you know, varying success, of course, um, versus, you know, you got, you know, these guys doing local TV on the one, uh, these guys doing YouTube, you know, and I, I think a lot of them are like, Hey, we need people to find out what we have before you guys, how you guys did. We're the same model. You released your show for, for the greater part of a year before you started saying, okay, this yeah. is worth people paying money. 
you know, and especially, right. especially, and, and I worry a little bit, you know, especially with a group like this that, you know, you know, I had that conversation with the videographer that's like, yeah, we're figuring out the video, you know. You so many people I think are willing to, in indie wrestling, are like immediately jump to DVD on their first show. Yeah. And I think that unless you, um, unless you have your production down. Yes. Like yes. you, you know. Well, it, it, it's it, not it, even the production. It's like, do you have a product people are going to buy? Because I've had, yeah, I've had groups too. come to me. I was like, well, what, what do you, you know. There are some companies that do shows that are not meant for DVD. They're meant for live shows and they're meant to draw a live right. crowd. Right. And it's not going to transfer to DVD and who's going to buy it. Is the live crowd there to, uh, wants to relive that or were they just there for the moment? You know, I think we see that with one of the promotions I work with, you know, and, and I'm trying to figure out the what's what's the nut on some of these other ones, too, that, mm -hmm. that we've been working with. Like, what what's missing here um, versus I, I, I think, you know, very much I think IWC is a product that people are willing to buy uh, with the people that they bring in all the time with the towns coming up. I mean, look, I mean, geez, you got how many guys are in Ring of Honor right now? They're IWC uh, alumni, right? How many guys right. how many guys are in WWE that are <laughs> IWC alumni? <laughs> like seriously, um, half the guys we talked about tonight on the Mayhem show have been around, exactly. right? I mean, that's that, there's a pedigree there, and I think that's a group that has proven itself and and is reignited and exciting, and uh, and we can do something with that. You guys, I think, are a perfect example. Download to inspire, right? Um, it's uh, I think it's a, a, a being able to look at yourself objectively, and I think some groups I see kind of making a mistake, like they're going. Uh, we talked about WWE and how there's a long-term goal. Mm -hmm. And there's the feeling uh, with some of these indies that, um, you know, they're going show to show. There's no long-term and there's no who's your audience. Are you playing to that crowd there and trying to get the butts and seats primarily? Or are you trying to be something bigger than this gymnasium? Right. right. Um, and... I, you look at VOW. I look at what you do. I look what IWC does in court time. And it's like, no, we want this to be bigger. You know, we want this to be a platform. We want this to be something else. And I think uh, we're varying success, you know. And I'm looking at, I'm looking around Pittsburgh. Just even, I'm just looking at Pittsburgh. And I'm seeing so many different versions and takes on a model. You know, mm -hmm. look at what PWX is doing. PWX has TV. Right. And PWX has their own venue that they can do stuff with and be creative there. And they're figuring out what to do there. I mean, I I was the first one to say, you know, turn, turn on when they turn on that first episode and TV. I was like, what the hell is this? It looks like it's from the 80s. Right. But yeah. you, you tune on. They have their shows online. You know, they tried something where they were selling their episodes for like th four bucks a pop. And I'm like, well, who's going to buy that? Where's your audience? Right. Um, and now, you know, they got a great product that I can watch on their thing. You know, what I, get, I don't know what the model is if eventually you buy the DVDs. I don't think they're even doing DVDs. You know, what? I, it's just still just some other reason to get butts and seats, right? And get an excitement around their product. So, I mean, and that's something uh, that you got to juggle. You know, how much do I give away versus how much do we do this? You know, there's a conversation yeah. we're, having, we're having right now with IWC, and there's very, very smart people at IWC trying to crack all that nut. And, 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 I, and that's, I've had. In the last uh, three, four, five months, I've had some really, really good conversations with some very smart people in the industry, or at least new good brains in the industry that I think are going to be around for a bit, personally, um, mm -hmm. that, that are going to be good. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I kind of got so boxy with that a little bit. No, What's going on in I, your neck of the woods? Uh, spe <laughs> speaking of DVDs, I guess I can mention that... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Five Star, they're having a show this weekend. Um, you can yeah. go check it out fswrestling.com St. Valentine's Massacre up there in uh, East, St. East Brady, PA. Sorry. Go ahead. Awesome. No, no, no. That's awesome. Um, speaking towards DVDs, uh, for the Inspire Pro fans out there that knew about uh, one of our biggest events that we've ever had, which was our Battle Wars event from October uh, that featured the stars of Chikara Pro Wrestling, uh, I have received word that it will be out sometime this week on uh, Smart Merc Video and, and SMVOD.com. I had the privilege of getting to watch the final cut of that event, uh, and it is really good. And I'm proud to show it to people, and, and, and hopefully you know, for you guys to enjoy it as well, um, both from the fact that we worked with Chikara and both from the fact that it was a, it was a groundbreaking show for us, but 
up and down the card, I think everyone on that card stepped up their game and, and really killed it. Uh, you can see our guest for today, Steve Marino, his match with uh, uh, Dasha Hatfield and Tadasuke, uh, which was an opening, which was the opening match that really set the tone for the whole show, and they killed it. Um, there's an awesome eight-person elimination tag featuring a lot of guys that you should know, um, and and be, they should be your new favorites. A lot of friends of the show. Um, there was the Colony against ACH and JoJo Bravo, and it was phenomenal. And there's a lot of just fun stuff on that show, and I, I, it was the most fun I've ever had because I got to call with Bryce Remsburg and Silver Ants and Dasher Hatfield, and it was amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, I encourage uh, if you are uh, a fan of us, a fan of Inspire Pro, or not even a fan, uh, to keep an eye on Spot Mark Video because uh, yeah, I have been told that it will come out later this week, so keep an eye out. Excellent, excellent. Um... And unfortunately, for whatever reason, we are not aware of anything else indie wrestling going on. <laughs> no, there's, there's actually not a lot as far as like the bigger indies go. Uh, there's a lot happening next weekend and the weekend. Oh, National Pro Wrestling Day. When's that? National Pro Wrestling Day is is it this weekend? I don't think it's it. It might weekend. be this weekend. I, I just got I just got the time hop uh, yesterday that National it Pro Wrestling. It is this weekend, actually. Oh wow! Uh, there's a guy on there that looks kind of like Dalton Castle. I know. He's in the main event, uh, I think. Wrestling Drew Gulak, if I'm not mistaken. I may be wrong on that. And maybe that's but... like a, that's, that's kind of says something. It's like, wow, we really didn't get too excited about this this year. Like, I yeah, think, I mean, it, I National feel Pro like... Wrestling Day has kind of become not, but not, and not a bad thing. But National Pro Wrestling has kind of become another Chikara show. Yeah, but it, it, it really is did. for a good cause. I yeah. will say that much. Uh, they, um, I forgot what charity. I, I'm pulling up the info right now. Uh, it. The SIBA it goes Foundation. to the SIBA Foundation, yes. Yeah. Uh, so all you know, the the money goes to that. So that's that's really awesome uh, to get to contribute to that. Um, so there, there's some really cool people on the card. Uh, like uh, Ashley Remington will be taking on Drew Gulak in the main event. I uh, know uh, they just announced a women's match, Kimberly against uh, Jenny Rose, which can be I think will be really good. Uh, and there's tons of you know cool talents on this card. It'll be in Norristown, Pennsylvania. Uh, at the Greater Norristown uh, Gymnasium, uh, and that is this weekend, the 8th. So uh, go check that out uh, if you're in the PA area. Uh, I know I also know it's this weekend because Brandon Shroud, a uh, friend of the show and friend of mine from Inspire Pro Wrestling, our ring announcer, will be at that event, uh, and he has a couple of Inspire Pro t-shirts also that he'll be selling. So uh, if you're going to go to that show also, uh, uh, talk to him and, and get an Inspire Pro t-shirt. Awesome. So. On that note, thank you, Amen. Another week of indie wrestling, great interview. Next week, we are scheduled to have one extremely cute wrestler in Colin Delaney. He is an extremely cute wrestler. On the show, and also a wonderful karaoke singer, I remember, yes. from uh, King of Trios uh, fan conclave, fan clave, whatever they called it. Um, so that was fun. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, if you want to check anything else, if you have anything to let us know about, please check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Email at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Look, at, look for us on Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google+, Plus, YouTube, Roku. Roku? No. Wait. Are we on Roku? Delete. I'm looking to bring us back. I have been given a method to bring us back to Roku. Wrestling, I hear this Roku thing's a good thing. I hear it's a big thing. I hear it's a big deal. I know some people listen or watch our shows on the Chromecast you can do from YouTube. Anything with a YouTube app, you can watch our shows. Watch Sorgatron Media. Just look up SorgatronMedia.com, Wrestling Mayhem Show, or on the Roku. No, that's not right. On a YouTube. Any YouTube. <laughs> de- oh, jeez. On the done. YouTube apps I'm on done. the various devices. That's why this is the last show of the night. Every Tuesday, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com at about 11 to 11.30 p.m. Eastern time. Whatever that is, your time zone. You're a guy from Scotland. It, you, yeah, he's I, from freaking Scotland. I, it was 2 in we, the morning when we started. We were crossing all the time. He ordered pizza at like 5 in the morning. How great is Scotland? Scotland's pretty freaking I didn't great. even know I had pizza in Europe. Well, oh not my that. god, sorry. This is really... <laughs> I don't even know. That's like it's xenophobic. It's, it's late at night. And, it's and xenophobic? It's I'm afraid of countries that don't have pizza? Damn right I am. This is Sork's fifth podcast. <laughs> He didn't say if he listened to this podcast. We'll find okay. out. 
He said Good. he listened to the other podcast. He didn't say he listened to this one. We'll see how thank this goes. Christ Almighty. <laughs> On that note, thank you, Eamon, at Eamon, too. Please, I'm at Sawyer. Try and check out everything at WrestlingMamShow.com. And uh, with that, PittsburghWrestling.com uh, for all the videos on my side. Smart Mark Video for Inspire Pro and the IWC as well. Just support any So yeah. Yeah. until next week, make sure you are supporting any wrestling. Never said, never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. for the oh. taste of the poor. Yeah. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see it from the back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.